Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. My name's Jason and thanks for watching the channel. Today we have this awesome new product from Blue Eddy. This is their EB55. Now this is just a little bit smaller than the EB70, but man, did they change a lot of features. Now this comes in with a 537 watt hour uh, capacity batteries. Now that's the same as most of the other power stations in this bracket. So the Jackery 500, EcoFlow has one, GoLabs has one, RockPals has one. Now that's where everything else starts to change. Now the first thing that's amazing about this battery, it has the built-in lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which means you can charge and discharge this battery 2,500 times and still have 80% of the capacity remaining. They basically call this a lifetime battery and uh, basically everything on this thing is gonna fail before the batteries lose capacity. Now on the front you have 12 outputs and uh, on the top you have a wireless charging. So 13 outputs total. So you're gonna need a fast way to charge this up if you plan to use all those outputs. And that's where Blue Eddy changed the game on the 500 watt hour portable batteries. Now this has dual inputs. So you can plug a solar panel to this side and plug the AC to DC adapter in this side and you can get 400 watts of charging on this battery. Basically, you can charge this up to full capacity in under two hours, and uh, yeah, that just basically blows away most of the competition out there right away. Now, not only does this charge fast, but you know, Blue Eddy was just like, you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna slap in the EB70 inverter right in here. So right down here, you have the 700 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now, one other amazing feature about the battery is they have this diffused LED on the back. So it's not that uh, horrible spotlight anymore. Um, it has a low mode. It has a high mode and get ready for it. Shut off the lights and get some music going. This has a party dance mode. Um, with all jokes aside, though, it's basically SOS mode. Um, maybe if you're ever in an emergency, you could signal somebody and uh, they might see it. You know, with all these features, where does it come in with the competition on pricing? Because who cares, you know, all about this stuff, but if the price is too high, no one's gonna wanna buy it. So the price on this battery comes in at $499. Now, Blue Eddy has a $50 off coupon, so it comes down to $449. Now, check the video description down below if you want that coupon and the link to click on to purchase this. But now the price is actually pretty dang competitive for having the 700 watt inverter the fast charging and all the outputs, especially the lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, I don't want you guys just to go rush out and buy this. What I wanna do the rest of the video is basically prove if this is a good battery. We're gonna test the capacity, we're gonna test all the outputs, we're gonna do some solar charging and see if it actually you know, matches up to the advertising to see if it's advertising garbage or if it's actually the real deal. So what I wanna do is give you guys all the information you need to know and you guys can make an educated decision if you want to buy this or not. So hopefully I spiked your guys' interest and uh, let's just get started. We're gonna dive right into the front panel and all the power outputs. Now let's go ahead and get this right out of the way. It uses the same display as the EB70, so I did dislike that display because it doesn't give you an actual percentage, but you know, it has a really clear input and output wattage, so at least it's easy to use. Now let's get started with the DC output here. There's a nice 12 volt socket with this rubber cover and two 5521 barrel connectors. Now, all the DC output is regulated at 13.3 volts and it supports pass through charging. So that means you can have a power output here and charging at the same time. Down here, you have your DC outputs. This has a USB-C 100 watt power delivery port. It's awesome. You can charge your MacBook, a laptop, as long as it supports USB-C, your smartphone, things like that, and it charges really fast. You have four additional USB-A ports and they support three amps each. Now down here, you have your 700 watt pure sine wave inverter. I did test the output and it is a pure sine wave and the RMS voltage is right around 113 volts AC. So it's pretty good output there. Each of these have a power button and a green light. So you can see the green light here. That means each of these is powered on. To save power, I always recommend turning these off. And once you turn these off, the display only is on for a couple seconds and then it turns off. If you want the display to stay on longer, you have to enable one of these ports and it stays on for about 30 seconds. Now on the top of the EB55, there's a 15 watt wireless charger. So you put your phone on there and it'll automatically start to charge. Okay, let's look at the charging input ports. 
Right here we have an XT60 connector. This is for the DC to DC charging, so like car charging and for solar panels. This side is an eight millimeter input and it's for the wall adapter that's included with the EB55. They accept different ranges of voltage. This one has 12 to 28 volts and an eight amp limit. So you can see 225 watts max on this side. This side accepts 25 volts to 28 volts and has a 10 amp limit. So you can see 280 watts input on this side. So there's three ways to charge the EB55 right out of the box. You have two cables here that plug into the XT60 connector. One is for charging in your car or off another battery. The other is for charging with solar. These are MC4 connectors, and as long as your solar panel has MC4 connectors, it'll work for you. The last way to charge is using this AC to DC adapter. You just plug this into your wall outlet or a generator, and you can charge up the EB55. Let's go ahead and show you how each of these charging methods work and what type of power you should see while you're using them. Now I wanted to test charging the Blue Eddy EB55 with the AC to DC adapter. When I plugged it in, I got 205 watts charging input. That's pretty impressive for a small battery like this. Now I also wanted to test how fast it would charge if you were plugging it into your vehicle while driving down the road. So I ran it off two different batteries and I got about 72 watts using the 12 volt DC to DC charging. Next, I wanted to test the max charging input you get from a solar panel and the AC adapter at the same time. So I plugged in my SP200 Blue Eddy 200 watt solar panel and got around 155 watts input. And then I plugged in the AC adapter and got 200 watts. So it maxed out at 355 watts charging on this battery. Now there are other ways to get more input wattages on this battery using either adjustable power supplies or step up converters. I'll have a separate video on that in the future so you guys don't get confused now, but stay tuned if you want to find out a faster way to charge this battery using something other than the default charging options. Okay guys, we're going to do some real world testing on this EB55 with solar panels. So this is my Blue Eddy SB200. I use this same solar panel on my EB70 testing. Let's go ahead and see what we're getting on the input. Okay, so here's the results with the SB200. We're getting 99 watts in and it's a little hazy. So let's see what we can do to get a little bit more power into the EB55. Okay, so now I have my SP200, and then I grab these other two folding solar panels. These are both 120 watts. They're all 12 volt panels, and I have them in parallel. So you can see one wire here, here, and that all going into the EB55. Let's see what we're getting now. Okay, we're getting 156 watts. Remember, this has a 8 amp limit. So if we're getting around 19 to 20 volts on the solar panels and 8 amps, this is right around our limit for solar. Okay, so let me clarify one thing really quick. I often get the question that, you know, do these solar panels having a ton of solar out here, does it damage the EB55? Does it get hot or anything like that? Now the EB55 has a built-in solar charge controller that acts like a gate. So the solar power is waiting here and then it opens up and it allows the power it needs to charge the battery and then it shuts the gate when it's done. The solar panels don't force their power into the EB55. This charge controller does all the controlling and as long as you stay within the 12 to 28 volt range you're not going to have any issues. Now what you can do is you can think of the extra solar panels out here as a reserve power because say we weren't getting a full 160 watts on this so we added extra so now we have reserve power. So if a cloud comes or if it gets a little hazy, we can have 400 watts of solar out here and we can always hit the 160 watt limit on the EB55. Now just a few quick reminders before ending the solar testing. Keep this in the shade when possible. The owner's manual says keep it out of direct sunlight. The other thing is you do not want to plug 24 volt panels into this. That voltage goes over 28 volts and will hurt the unit. The other thing is this does not support 12 volt panels in series. It only supports 12 volt panels in parallel, and that's how I have these connected here. Positive to positive, negative to negative, the voltage stays the same, and the amperage is all added together into the EP55. Thanks for watching guys, let's go ahead and jump on to another section of testing. Let's go ahead and do some capacity testing on this battery. First, we're gonna test the DC output. Now this has 537 watt hours of storage, so if we do a 0.2C discharge test, we're gonna to wanna to run a load at 107 watts. Okay, so we have it set to 107 watts. We'll discharge this as long as it'll go. Let's see what the capacity is at the end of the test. Okay guys, the 12 volt socket just shut off and this is what we got during our test. We pulled 478 watt hours from the battery during a four and a half hour period. That also translates to 36.86 amp hours. Now remember this is 537 watt hours, so we pulled about 89% efficiency from this battery. 
If you remember the EB70, I'll throw these results up on the screen. It's rated at 716, and we got 616 out of it, so about 86% efficiency. And the B-Bean budget power station I just tested was rated at 614, and it came out with 561 watt hours, so about 94% efficiency. So there's just an idea how efficient this battery is. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this results. I was got I was actually expecting less, so this is a very good for the price point and the features of this battery. Okay guys, time for the AC inverter capacity test. Now, what we want to do is see how much battery storage we get using the AC inverter, and this will tell us how efficient the inverter is. By the time this test finishes, we'll know how much capacity we get out of the AC inverter. Stay tuned and we'll find out what we get. Let's go ahead and sum up the results of the AC discharge test. We pulled 468 watt hours from the battery. Remember it has 537 watt hours advertised. So if we do some math, that's about 87% efficiency. Now compared to the EB70, which we got 81% efficiency on the inverter, and the BB portable power station, we got 73% efficiency. This did a really good job and I'm very happy with these results. Okay, so I'm running a test on the inverter. Pulling 726 watts, that's 26 watts over the advertised limit. Let's see if we can do it for five minutes. Okay, so we ran it for five minutes. We're pulling around 728 watts. Didn't shut down. Pretty happy with these results. The uh, air coming out's a little bit warm. The fans are running, of course. So let's see if we can turn this up and see uh, if we can get it to cut out. Oh, overload. Okay, we got overload. So we went over 800 watts and it shut it off. So, wow, pretty impressive, guys. So I wanted to do a teardown video for you guys, but as I took it apart, you realize there's a top piece and a bottom piece and they're glued together all the way around the battery. So I can't take this apart unless I was to cut the whole thing open with a saw. Now I don't want to ruin this battery. It's been really good so far, but let's go ahead and take a look inside. Now we have the cylindrical lithium iron phosphate cells down here and we have a fan that pulls the air out this way. Let's flip it around. Looking at the other side, we have a push fan. So there's a push pull configuration to give really good cooling over the inverter and the cells inside. And then you can see each cell is rated for 12.8 watt hours. Okay guys, we're basically to the end of the video. I just have a few more things that I think are really important to talk about, about the EB55. So let's go ahead and talk about 12 volt compressor fridges really quick. So I tested my ISCO VL45 on this battery for a complete rundown test. Now the temperature outside was about 75 degrees and this battery ran my VL45 for 39 hours. Now that's a pretty good runtime, but just remember as the temperature goes up, you're gonna see less runtime because the compressor on the fridge has to run more often. So this is the minimum level that I'd ever recommend for running a fridge, um, 500 watt hours. So if you want to get a longer runtime, you may wanna go up to a bigger battery or make sure you have more solar panels. Now the great thing about this is it accepts so much solar input that you can keep this battery charged up pretty quickly. Okay, so I got some papers here. Um, one thing that I'd always recommend is make sure you read the owner's manual. This will give you some good estimated run times on appliances around the house. And also it shows you how to charge and use this with some warnings. Just make sure you read through this so you understand how this works. All Blue Eddy products come with two year warranties at least. And that's a really good peace of mind for a battery that you're gonna be spending almost $500 on. So it's good to know that you have a company that's gonna back you up and replace the battery if there's any issues. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about pros and cons of this battery. So there's a lot of pros with this battery and just a few cons. They've made some good changes over the EB70 and I really like where this is going. Now, one of the first things that's amazing about this battery is the fast charging 400 watt input. You saw in the video, I got 355 watts. Now, the next thing that's good about this battery is the lithium iron phosphate chemistry inside. The battery cells inside of this have a really good lifetime like I said, 2,500 life cycles, and you'll still have plenty of capacity remaining in the battery. So that's a really good pro there. 
Another great thing about this battery is the cost. Now, out the door cost after taxes for me was $483. So not too bad for a 500 watt hour power station that can charge really fast. So right along with the competition, I think the price is very competitive. The last thing that's really a pro in my mind is the 13 outputs. You have 12 on the front, you have the 13th on the top, and it's just really good to be able to power so many devices using this battery. One other thing I like about this is the folding handle as well. A lot of power stations have this massive handle on the top, you know, for carrying it. The problem with that is you can't put anything on top of it and it, you can't stack anything on top of it. So it kind of becomes useless space. So I really like the folding handle that Blue Eddy has put into the design of the EB55 and the EB70. So really good kudos there. Now let's go ahead and talk about the cons. One of the things that I definitely dislike about this is just the display not showing as much information. Even my cheapo Bybean power station had an estimated runtime and an actual percentage of the battery remaining. This does not have that. So it's bright, you can see everything on it, but it's just missing some key features that make it easier to use. So the display is definitely a con in my mind. The other thing that's not absolutely amazing, like I said earlier, the capacity is not super high. It came out with 478 watt hours, so you're right on the borderline minimum. Just remember that this capacity is not huge for running a larger appliance, like um, you know, using something on the 700 watt inverter or even running a 12 volt compressor fridge. You're not gonna get crazy run times just because the battery is not very big. But overall, there's definitely more pros with this battery. Like I said, I've really liked the way that Blue Eddy has gone with this, and I feel comfortable recommending this battery, and uh, all the testing really checked out. Okay, well, I was just going to compare this battery to the EB70 and my Bybean, and the video went on for like six minutes. I thought it was going to be too long. So stay tuned for a future video comparing this battery against my other power stations. You guys are going to love that information. It's very detailed. That video should be out soon, so keep an eye out for that on my channel. Anyway, guys, I really loved testing this. It came back with really good results, and I feel like Blue Eddy's going in the right direction with this EB series. Uh, definitely with the two-year warranty, feel really good about it, and it provides a lot of power for running pretty, pretty much anything that you need at camp, 12-volt uh, compressor fridge and other gadgets like that. Now, if you guys like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also, if you guys like this content, this is what my channel's all about, with these power stations, solar panels, 12-volt compressor fridges, camping gadgets, things like that. If you guys like that type of thing, I think you'd love subscribing to my channel to be notified for future videos. Now, if you guys have any questions about this battery or other content, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you. Anyway, guys, you guys are awesome. Thanks for all the support and we'll see you guys in the next video.